Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another out and about video and today we are doing a cemetery walkthrough but a different kind of cemetery and where we are right now we are in a place called Crosher Booth and it's just heading towards Burnley in between Ronstall and Burnley in the northwest of England but it's here we have visited the Rosendale Pet Crematorium. Now we've spoke to a lady called Helen just before we came in just to ask and to make sure we are okay in videoing because we just didn't want to turn up with the camera and obviously be disrespectful so we've asked and we've got permission from a, a nice lady called Helen who works in reception and she's given us a few heads up of where to visit such as we believed in that direction where there's a, a quite an unusual unique story behind the headstone so we're going to go to that shortly but um helen like i said she's kindly given us permission to film and we thought you guys might be interested in seeing this place and seeing something different on the channel other than just obviously human graves so we're here at the Rosendale pet crematorium we're going to take a walk around check out some of these headstones and uh, hopefully you guys find it as interesting as what me and vicky um have already I found interesting now and I'm, I'm smiling and laughing behind the camera because some of the names on the headstones that we've already seen um they're quite humorous and I, I and I'm going to say it a few times this video I say humorous but not in a disrespectful way um you'll you'll get what I mean as we get to some of these these graves now one of the first plots if you will that we were told would be of interest not only to us but to you guys is this one and it belongs to an escapologist i think helen said was from blackpool and it belongs to a guy called antony peter bartnick also known as carl bartoni now if you notice there is a year 6 of the 3rd 1949 but there's no death date if you will and that's because Carl is still with us but he's reserved this plot for when he passes himself and he's going to be I don't know if he's going to be buried here or he's going to have his ashes put here but with his pets and as you can see his pets here You've got Barney, a short-haired border collier, who was 18 and a half years. He was a loving, loyal, sympathetic, gentle, playful, and very wise old woofer dog. We love you, Mama and Daddy. And Charlie, a unique Yorkshire Terrier cross, died 2nd of March 2010, aged 15 and a half. And as it says, as my devoted shadow and soulmate, unique in every way, you gave me love, joy, and fun. Rest in peace, now freed of pain, until we meet up for cuddles once again. Loving you, Daddy. And there is some more in the back of these. We'll go this way. So we had quite a few, a few pets. You've got Barney, typical border collier, or collie. Black and white markings. Charlie, Yorkie colours and markings, but with long sticky up ears. Longer nose, long tail and very long legs. Abandoned in an alley when about six months old. Had a big insecurity complex and always needed to stay in visual contact. A long history of reoccurring health issues but a perfect patient. Died from the many effects of neoplas neoplasia, neoplasia in hind leg and organs. Lived to constantly love, be loved, give and get cuddles. I'm going back to the barney. Found abandoned at a bus stop when about seven weeks old, highly intuitive and sympathetic. Always walk with a waggy tail, suddenly died of leukaemia. So two abandoned dogs that um, Carl took upon himself to, to look after and love. And this is Carl himself. And there is a barcode. Not sure what that will take you to. However, Carl Bartoni. Britain's most unique escapologist and magician, the only escape artist allowed to escape from bonds whilst hanging upside down from the top of the Blackpool Tower, 1983. Married to his beloved Wendy whilst they were suspended mid-air from the top of Blackpool Tower, 1985. 
He played a key role in, in forming, expanding and promoting the British Bizarre Magic Movement by bringing many like-minded magicians together, 88 to 2008. And the first person to be granted special permission to be buried here, which led to the setting up of the People's Area, died with a broken heart. But yet he's not died. But yet he's not died, as Vicky's just uh, <laughs> reminded us of. But yeah, this is definitely, definitely unique. But, as for Carl, bringing two dogs into his family who were well loved and well looked after, which were sadly abandoned by, I presume, the previous owners. And living to a very good old age. Really. And, as Vicky said, living to a very good old age. Now, it goes without saying, doesn't it, that we all know or we've all heard of a pet called Sooty. And here we go, one of the first headstones we've come across. Sooty, 2001 to 2013. Loyal friend of Graham Tracy, beloved first cat of Vincent and sister of Coco. R.I.P. Sot Sot. Now, just like people, we're not going to walk along, obviously, the plots. But just look at this, I mean, this goes to show you just how loved pets are. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the expense is to headstones, people will pay because at the end of the day, dogs and cats and other animals are part and parcel of, of families. And in this case, we've got PP, then we've got Miles. Nice engraving there of the dog. Precious son, grandson, brother and friend playing with the angels until your mummy meets you again. But that's what I mean, people obviously will pay money. And rightly so far, they're lost. Furry friends, if you will. Now Vicky knows more about ages and when it comes to animals than I do. And like Vicky just points out, Bobby Mitchell's Shih Tzu, 20th, 11th, 2nd, 7th, 2013, aged 13 years. Like Vicky just said, obviously that's a really good age for a dog. Whereas you've got the other one next to it, Marley Mitchell, and I can't pronounce that name. What breeds that, Vic? Cooker, Cooker Hondier? I can't pronounce that, sorry. But aged five years. No life, really, no life. Nope, no life. Well, it probably has, but... Well, yeah, I mean, in the, in the bigger term of schemes, like, say, five years is no age, is it? I think that's what we mean to say. Now, I like this one. Straight to the point. But, even though we can see Jacob Thorburn, Good Night, God Bless Angel, it's this little book. Special Dog. And I think, is it your walking tale and happy place, is it? I can't really make out the rest. But that little book with a little description sums up what, obviously, this dog meant to its previous owner. Good night, God bless, Angel. got lucky died 24th of March 2011 again aged 14 so as Vicky said on the shit so Bobby Mitchell just over there 14 years is a really good long life for for lucky now obviously we're not gonna be able to read every single headstone that is here because there is there is a lot and for context, we were talking to Helen just before we started filming, just to ask for permission if we could be allowed to film today here. And she, really nice, absolutely fine with it. Um, but she was telling us that all this started, this is back in 1967, yeah. when the first burial took place here. And I think it's just as you come through the main gates, there's a plot down there and it's a farmer's dog who was sadly, the farmer accidentally ran over the dog, his pet dog, and buried him 
just in that location. And this is how all this started back in 1967. Um, and it's just gone from strength to strength, if you will. It's just got bigger and bigger. So we're going to visit the, the actual plot itself when we're leaving. Um, and obviously we'll get the name, because I can't top of my head, I can't remember what the dog's name was, or the owner's name. But we're going to go down there. Now, apparently, there's also a bigger plot somewhere here. And I think, also did Helen mention possible horses, yeah, there's horses here. that have been buried? Yep. So we'll try and find some of those graves, or one of those graves. But like I said, we're not going to be able to name every single one, which is unfortunate. And we are going to treat it with utmost respect, like we always do. Hope you guys find this video interesting and enjoyable, because like I said, again, it is something different other than just your standard graveyard, graveyard, not graveyard, graveyard tour. Now you've got a Buddha here, in loving memory of Spud, aged 14, and Jess, aged 16. Torn in 1947 to 2014, reunited and with gracious wing, together we'll enjoy heavenly, beautiful things. The Smith family. So, we think, well, by the looks of it, these are the horse plots. In, my, in memory of Magic Time, a Magic Girl X Arctic Time. 1962 in Ayr to 6 November 1974 winner of four races and then you've got in loving memory I think it's of Curry I can't make out the rest of it oh it's very difficult to read but again born 1972 in Ayr laid to rest 13th of July 1998 so this is a horse a horse's plot, and I think there's another one where Vicky is. Just up here. Bally Hay, our beloved horse and best friend, aged 36 years. And there's a lot more in here, though. Well, yeah, Vicky's just seen this, like I said, and you've got, I, I presume the ashes mm. are inside these boxes. Um, you've got Lightning, aged 11 years. Um, yeah, Vicky thinks there could be more than two in here. You've actually got names. You can see the plaque just on the box there. Oh, unless these are two for those two. Could be. No, no, we don't want to move any of the headstones. Um, and looking further up, you've got, I can see Penny in this one, and one further back. So these definitely, we found the horses on soon there. Treasured, treasured memories of our beloved ponies, Whisper and Jigsaw. And that's obviously a bit of a smaller one, but yeah, I mean, even horses, as we said at the start of the video, are interred with up within these grounds here at um, Rosendale Pet Cemetery. And like I said, it's just inside the small little village of Crosher Booth, which if you see these houses just in front on the hillside, Crosher Booth's just in the dip in the valley down below, because there is a bit of a hill, a bit of a lane to get up to where we are today. You can actually drive your car up, but just be warned guys, if you do come here, the lane is quite narrow. Now there is some parking spaces alongside the road for cars, or passing bays I should say, for cars to pass here. So you can actually drive up, and it is a quiet lane, it's not like it's a busy one where there's cars going up and down every five minutes or so. So you will be quite safe in driving up here. Me and Vicky walked up because we weren't sure at the time um, if he could park. But uh, we parked in further down in the village. But by all means, bring your cars up and uh, you can park where this white van is just in front. And the reception offices is just here on the left. Right, we're going to continue walking around and check out some more of these amazing headstones. This is more of your modern section I would think uh, because Helen was telling us that the older sections on that side of the cemetery so we're going to go and have a look at the older side now and uh, pay our respects to some of these little fluffy furry friends of ours now just for the size and scale of where we are now you've got one two three four five six walls full of plaques with all pet names 
and obviously the years they were born and departed so it, again you can see how many how many animals have been or the ashes maybe have been interred up here not just ashes obviously but obviously the, the bodies as well but it is in fields or we are high up in some fields and it it sprawls along upwards and i think there's a bit of expansion going on just at the back of here and as you come further down where vicky is and the white van just down there it also goes down that lane as well but just on these walls alone it's hard to guess or hard to count just how many different names and different animals have plaques there's so many Now another one that's just made me chuckle is this one and again I say chuckle I don't mean it disrespectfully I mean it in a in a nice way but you've got peanuts and you've got raisins now how corny and how unique is that our treasured boy who went to sleep 12th October 1995 aged 13 years and you've got raisins our treasured boy who went to sleep 5th November 1999 aged 15 years but I do love that peanuts and raisins Now I like this headstone, beloved, beloved JT, 1989 to 2005, famous terrier who knew when his own Pam was coming home. Now we have two dogs ourselves, we have Tia and Molly, and every single night we come home from work, me and Vicky, we always come through the back door into the kitchen, and when you open the back door, we have a settee directly in front, just through the, the hallway. And Tia and Molly, as well, I would say at least four days out of five, from Monday to Friday, they will be on the armchair of the settee, waiting for us to come through the back door. So I know exactly what that means when waiting for Pam, or knows when Pam's coming home. We know exactly what that means from our own two dogs. Now from all accounts, these, this section now is the older side of the pet cemetery. Um, and we have been told just now, we speak to a nice chap, and I think he helps erect the headstones and maintains them, just in the white van here. And he was saying that some of the headstones, they've sadly had to lay down just for safety, such as the one underfoot here now and here now okay they might not be the tallest headstones but still um i suppose it could cause or could cause quite an obstruction should anybody be too close and they go over but yeah i mean some of these go back to 1999 now but we are looking for the very first plot or the very first interment here and it was a farmer who sadly like i said he ran over his pet dog with his tractor back in 1967 so we're now just looking for that um, that headstone now for you guys to take a look at now how sad's this rex 14 years of pleasure and fun ended by a hit and run Now, I don't know about you guys, but how is this for an age? In loving memory of my cat, Kelly, died November 1st, 1978, aged 25 years. Nikki, 12 years. Bimbo, 15 years. And then there's a couple more underneath. But my word, 25 years for a cat. So as you can see, these headstones go on and on and on. And even though a lot of them do look the same, same size, same in style, this is the older part of the actual cemetery. And apparently it's here where, and I'm not sure if it's still the case today, but a lot of these headstones have been put where people wanted them to be put. So it wasn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
regimentalized is that the word there's no order if you will people can put their animals where they want here whereas on the other side of the fields there's a bit more order to it a bit more structure um, there is actual places where pets can be interred whereas here like I said it was more a case of where there's a plot if people wanted to say here they could be the, the animals could be placed here so yeah so like I said this is the more older side and we're going to carry on walking in this direction before we call it a day here at the Rosendale Pet Crematorium and like I said I do hope you've enjoyed this video it's been something different for me and Vicky and hopefully for you guys um, there isn't many pet crematoriums that I know of here in the northwest um, and none certainly near to where me and Vicky live so we thought we'd bring you guys with us and thank you to Helen and the staff at Rosendale Pet Crematorium for allowing us to film today now here guys we've got Rinty or also known as Chum wonderful character and our faithful friend Now one thing I do find fascinating, to be honest, is the fact that most of these headstones, like they would for our human headstones, they have numbers on. So 456, and then you've got 441 just further up there. Um, it's quite fitting really that they are still numbered, which it goes to show that even in death, our pets that we cherish and that we love like we would if it was a mother father husband wife child we still respect them like we would like i said with our human counterparts so much detail goes into the headstones for a family pet and i think it's really really nice and fitting because like i said all pets, they are part of families, aren't they? You know, I mean, I mentioned it further up, for, or further on in the video, I should say, um, about our two dogs, Tyr and Molly, who were always there on the settee waiting for us to walk through the kitchen door every night after work, tails wagging. So joyful and playful and happy to see you. We're going to start to edge towards the exit now and I'm going to have one further look down here for the very first interment and hopefully I'll find it um, this time around so we found it guys the very first plot here at Rosendale Pet Crematorium and it simply says in memory of a loving pet Judy Killed by a tractor 1957 to 1967, she never told a lie. Dickinson Cross your booth. So this is the very first plot that started and kick-started all of what you see and what we've shown you guys today. Sadly, Judy was killed by its, its owner back in 1967 and he buried his pet dog here. And it's remarkable to think that this, like I said, kick-started everything you see around here and over in that direction and it's expanding it's becoming ever more popular here in Cross your booth so rest in peace Judy I wonder if you knew what you'd started all those years ago here in these windy hills of Cross your booth now when me and Vicky walked up this lane one of the very first headstones or memorials we saw was this one and it's really sad it really is and it hits you just as you walk through the main gates and it simply says here I lie an unknown pet collected by mistake from a vet no one comes to visit me but here I lie my friends with thee donated by friends of this cemetery so how sad is that? An unknown pet lies here and it says no one comes to visit me but here I lie. So whatever it is, if it's a dog, a cat, 
rabbit. Maybe it's soul or it's spirits running free in these fields now with the other pets and the other animals that are interred here. Maybe it's now got friends and other animals that know who he or she is. But that is truly sad. So that's it guys from here in Crosshire Booth and the Rosendale Pet Crematorium. We hope you enjoyed this video, but we do wish to thank Helen for allowing us the opportunity to come over and video just some of the headstones and memorials of those pets now interred here. Now we hope you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give us a like, give us a big thumbs up, don't forget to comment and subscribe but more importantly don't forget to share this video. Sharing the video obviously gets us further out there and we really do appreciate the support you guys are giving us. Now if you are in the northwest of England, you're in Rottenstall, you're in Accrington, you're in Blackburn or anywhere around Burnley area, anywhere, anywhere like this, please come up here and give the guys at the Rosnell Pet Crematorium a visit. I don't think you'll regret it, I think you'll enjoy a short stay up here. But in the meantime guys, as I always say, take care, look after yourselves and we will be back soon with another story from my dark but glorious past. Take care guys.